Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning and welcome to Christian Pentecostal Church's devotional moment. I am Pastor Brenda Bird. Would you turn with me to Psalms 15? And while you're turning there, let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you for life, oh God. And Lord God, as we read your word today, I pray that you would encourage the hearts of your people. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Psalms 15 says, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money as interest, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. I want to talk to you this morning <clears throat> out of verses 1 through 3. And David is asking a question here. You know, sometimes it's very important to sit down and do some self-examination, self-evaluation of what's going on within our own heart. You know, the word tells us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And sometimes if we are not careful, we can be deceived by our own heart. Jeremiah tells us that the heart is exceedingly wicked who can know it and so what comes out of our mouth a lot of time is what we have deposited in our spirit through our mind through our soulish man and so it's very important sometimes to check our own selves check our thinking check what we're allowing to go into our heart because it does expose us what comes out of our mouth so David's question here said, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? You know, abiding is spending time in the presence of the Lord. It's not visiting. It's not showing up just on a Sunday. But it is dwelling with him and abiding with him Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's taking some time to rest in his spirit. It's taking some time to just sit in the presence of the Lord and talk to him and listen to him, which is more important. What is going on with me? What is going on within my heart? Am I loving my neighbor like I should? Am I being an encourager to my brother or sister as I should? And am I a gatherer with the Lord or am I a scatterer with the enemy? So he says, who can abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill? Verse 2 says, he who walks uprightly, who works righteousness and who speaks the truth in his heart. Very, very powerful, that verse within itself. He who walks uprightly. How do we walk uprightly? We walk uprightly according to the word of God. We walk uprightly being obedient to the word of God. We walk uprightly by serving God in his kingdom, by serving others. We walk uprightly by doing the work that the Lord has called us to do. Who works righteousness? How do we work, work righteousness? Being truthful, being honest, walking in the holiness of God. You know, through this new age mindset, which has crept into the church, many have a mindset that, you know, God will just forgive anything and everything. And he will. There's no sin under the sun that anyone that can commit that God will not forgive us for. That's what the blood of Jesus provides. However, it also tells us that God is not mock. What a man or a woman sow, they will definitely reap. 
And so many times we can think it's okay to do certain things or go places or, or get involved in things that are not of, of God and say, well, you know, God will forgive me. And he will. But what is the price? What is the penalty? You know, it's a cost to the decisions that we make. And God may forgive us, but we still may have to suffer and deal with the consequences. And so it's very, very important that we um, be mindful that though God loves us and he will forgive us for any action or anything that we do, that there is a price to pay. Are we willing to pay the price? Is there a penalty? Are we, is we willing to suffer the consequences of our decisions? Works righteousness. And he who speaks truth in his heart. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that lies. That just tell lies. And sadly, in the body of Christ, lie about who they are. Lie about their positions lie about their humbleness like the lord wants us to be honest and truthful and it's very important because you know just be who we are because we can't be anyone better than who we are and god is always working on us and working in us and through us but if we're not honest about who we are if we're not honest about our imperfections, if we're not honest about our dysfunctions, and we're, you know, it's a saying in the world, fake it till you make it. That should not be in the truth in the church. We should not be faking it until we make it. We have made it in Christ by being saved. And now it's time to allow the Lord to heal us from within and that we may be a light to this darkened world, that we may be that salt, that season and preserve for those that are broken and hurting. We shouldn't be faking it till we make it. We should be children of the light, walking in the light and exposing the darkness. Speak truth within our heart. Verse three says, he who does not backbite with his tongue, mm, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend wow this is very powerful one should not backbite with his tongue the bible tells us that the tongue needs to be it, it is unruly and cannot be tamed we need to surrender our tongue to the lord and everything we think should not come out of our mouth especially when you're talking to loved ones and family members. Sometimes we can speak things or say things out of anger that we really don't mean at that moment, but I don't care how many times we apologize and say, I'm sorry, forgive me, they still will feel that we meant that thing. So we need to ask the Lord, as David said, put a guard over my mouth, hallelujah. Put a guard over my mouth. Let the words of my mouth, hallelujah, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. He said, nor does evil to his neighbor. I know many brothers and sisters who have the, the neighbors seem like the wicked from the wicked west. However, pray for your neighbor. Try to love them and be a light to your neighbor. And this main one here, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. How can you take up a reproach against your friend? Well, Judas did it with Jesus. You know, the psalmist says, we walk to the house of the Lord together. We worship God together. We, we serve God together. And then you lifted up your heel against me. So we need to search our hearts and ask God to cleanse our hearts from unforgiveness, for lack of love, from jealousy, from envy, and all those things that would like to separate us from our families, from our church family, from our friends and associates. So today, brothers and sisters, I would say to you, abide in the presence of the Lord. Allow him to heal your heart. Allow him to teach us his ways and his righteousness and be blessed in him. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he give you his sweet, sweet peace. In Jesus' name, abide in the presence of the Lord. God bless you and have a good day.